Okay, let's go ahead and master proportions. So this is a very important topic. Uh, it's kind of introduced to you in algebra, but proportions are um, um, actually very important in geometry as well. But the concept of something being in proportion is kind of in our everyday vernacular, you know, it's a common phrase, oh, that looks proportional. You know, just think about, you know, if you're, you're cooking, you know, a recipe, you know, you're, you have to have the same ratio of ingredients in the small pot, but you want to, you know, make more of the same thing. You would use a bigger pot and you want to you know, make sure you have the ingredients, you know, put in in the same proportion, same ratios, etc. So this word proportion or proportions is often uh, related to the topic of rates and ratios, etc. Now, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been doing a few... Um, videos on proportions. You can find those in my pre-algebra uh, playlist and uh, some more basic uh, level uh, type of uh, introductory level uh, concepts on proportions. So this um, video, what I'm going to do is get into a little bit more in-depth properties of proportions. You can see uh, some of them here. Okay, so we're going to quickly review some basic fundamental concepts of proportions, and then we're going to get into a little bit more advanced things that oftentimes are overlooked or maybe not taught at the introduction level about proportions. And we're going to get into all that in just a second, but first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online video-based math help programs there is. So whether you need to take a full math course or need assistance in your math course, my program can help you out. Okay, so it would include, or all my courses include complete full comprehensive lessons. And I also teach you how to solve the most common problems you're gonna uh, encounter at the middle and high school uh, level. You can actually solve thousands of problems, all video based. So it's taken me a long, long time to build and I think it's an excellent resource, but I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check it out by following the link in the dis, uh, description of this video. Now. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you are studying mathematics. So that gives me a chance to be a math teacher, put my math teacher hat on, and just stress the importance of taking math notes. So over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades. And the reverse is true. Okay, if you're not taking notes or you take inconsistent notes or sloppy notes or unorganized notes, you need to improve, okay? This is impacting your ability to learn math. Just trust me on this one, okay? Take a look at your notes. There's always a room for improvement. Uh, so if you're struggling in math, you're probably struggling with your notes, okay? But if you, um, you know, don't have good notes right now, I actually offer very detailed and comprehensive notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. And you can find a link to those in this uh, in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into proportions, and we're going to talk about these properties in just a second. But first, let's just do a quick review. Okay, what is a proportion? We should just know this, uh, right? You know, right off the bat, we are talking about proportions. Well, in the most basic term, uh, pro a proportion is just two equal fractions. Okay, so let's say I have the fraction one half. Let's think of another fraction that's equal to it, but that's obviously we're going to use different numbers, maybe like, say, five tenths, okay? This is a proportion. We have one fraction, and it's equal to another fraction. It's no more complicated than that. Now, I did mention uh, rates and ratios, right, as kind of related topics when we're studying proportions. And rates and ratios are just fractions, um, uh, by themselves, okay? So these are just types of fractions. What makes these kind of unique, or why we use different names, we just don't call these guys fractions, is because we're using units of measure, okay? So like a rate, if I have a car here, let's say here's my car, it's traveling, I'm saying, uh, what is the rate of the car, right? You're thinking about speed or velocity. Uh, so how do we kind of like, you know, describe how fast a car is going? Well, we might say something like 60 miles per hour. We're like, okay, well, how is that a fraction? Well, it's going 60 miles per one hour. So this is a fraction, 60 over one, but our units of measure are different, miles, and then this is time. So this distance 
being compared to time. So that would be uh, that would be a rate. Now I get into this in more detail in other videos, but just so you know, rates and ratios um, are just types of fractions. Okay, but we're focused here on proportions. Okay, now uh, oftentimes, okay, uh, when we're dealing with proportions we want to solve proportion problems. So something like this, if I say, if I got one half equals five over 10, let's put a little X here, okay? And I say, solve the proportion. Well, the number one thing you can do, the easiest thing is to use what we call the cross product. I'm gonna get into this in more detail in a second, but let's just uh, see what this is. That if you, um, when you have a proportion, these diagonals, when you have the product of these diagonals, crosswise, okay, the cross product, two times x, okay, two times x, like so, it's equal to this, this product this way is equal to this product this way. So two times x, and in algebra we write that as 2x is equal to 1 times 10, that would be 10. Now I have a nice little basic algebraic equation. I could solve for x by dividing both sides of the equation by 2, so x is equal to 5. And if you recall, that's what we had up here right there, right? That's one half is equal to five tenths, right? Two equal fractions, that is a proportion. So um, when you're studying proportions, we like to solve proportion type of problems, okay? And this is probably the most direct um, way to do so, all right? So that is what a proportion is. And now let's get into some more interesting properties of proportions, okay? But before we do that, one other thing here, I want to um, just uh, formally tell you what I just did, right? So I just did this business, okay, with that last problem. Okay, remember I multiplied across to solve that. Doing that, I said, was referred to as the cross product, all right? So in other words, I multiply this way Okay, that's B times C. That's equal to A times D. All right, we refer to that as a cross product, but it's also referred to by this other little saying like this, the means are equal to the extremes. Okay, so this is another way, if you're studying proportions in your class, you might've heard these words, the means and the extremes. So what are the means and the extremes? Well, B and C right here, uh, and when we have A over B equals C over D, this position of these fractions, B and C, we refer to as the means, and then A and D, these two uh, positions, okay, right here, this numerator and that denominator, uh, we refer to as the extremes. So you can see this is just the means, or equal to the extremes, and don't ask me why they're called means and extremes. I don't have the answer to that, but that would be a nice research project indeed. Okay, so again, cross product, means equals the extremes, both very common phrases when we're talking about proportions. All right, now let's get into some unique, uh, cool properties of proportions. All right, so again, what is a proportion? It's two equal fractions. So let's consider these fractions right here. A over B, that's a fraction, and we're saying it's equal to C over D. These are two equal fractions. Okay, so here I have an example. One half is equal to three, six right here, okay? Just two equal fractions. We know that's the case, but what we want to focus in on here is what's in the a position. Okay, for this example, all right, one. Okay, what's in the b position here? It's two. All right, this would be like my a. This would be like my b, and then c right here. That's a three, and then here is a d. Okay, it's the denominator of the second fraction, so this would be like my d. Okay, so one half over three six, of course they're equal, okay, because three six I can reduce it, it's the same thing as one half. Now, let's take a look at some properties of proportion. So I have a proportion, okay, so what does that mean? Well, AD, AD is equal to BC. This is the cross product. We've just been doing this over and over again, right? And we're just multiplying across. Uh, BC here is equal to AD cross product. And this example would be one times six, okay, right there, is equal to two times three or three times two. This is the cross product or the means or equal to the extremes, okay? So that's the first and probably the most common property of, um, of proportions, okay? But here we have some uh, interesting ones. Check this one out. 
A over C is equal to B over D. Hmm, this is really cool stuff. Let's go ahead and erase this so we don't confuse this. Now we have to concentrate here. What is A? Okay, what's in this position? A, A is 1. Okay, so we'll put this here, 1. 1 over C. Now what's C? C is the numerator of the other uh, fraction. So in this case, it would be 3. Okay, so 1 over 3, all right, is also equal to B over D. Well, I'm now I'm comparing the denominators. So B and D, so that would be 2 and, and 6. So look at this. 1 over 3 is equal to 2 over 6. And if I reduce this fraction, 2 over 6, I get 1 third. So that's a pretty interesting um, comparison. All right, we're comparing uh, the numerators and the respective denominators, but we have equivalency. Okay, it's pretty interesting property of proportions. That is, you know, you're probably not going to be, um, you know, uh, using this, you're, you're, again, most proportion problems, and we can use this, but these are all equivalencies within uh, proportions. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one, B over A. Okay, so what's that? B and A. So all you're doing is flipping the fraction. Okay, I'm just flipping it upside down over D and C. So I have, I had one half is equal to three six. Well, I could just flip these guys two over one. That's equal to six over three. And, of course, 2 divided by 1 is the same thing as 6 divided by 3, because 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 divided by 1 is 2. All right, pretty cool stuff. Okay, so let's check out this last one here, A plus B over B. Okay, so now we're adding the numerator and denominator. So in this first one, that would be, if we're looking at this fraction here, that would be 1 plus 2. That's my numerator over 2, okay, that's my b, you got to pay attention to where these variables are at, is the same thing as 3 plus 6 over 6. So if we just kind of do the math here, this is 3 halves, and then this would be uh, 9, 6, which, of course, we could reduce as 3 halves. So, again, pretty cool properties of proportions. And uh, most students, when you learn proportions, they're like, oh, I just know the means and extremes of the cross product. I'm good to go. And for the most part, you know, that is going to be the most handy, uh, you know, universal property that we probably use to solve most proportion problems. But we have uh, these other properties as well. And then there's one more I'm going to share with you. And that's this. Now, we've been talking about just two fractions here, like one half is equal to five tenths. But there's all types of uh, equivalencies we can have. There's infinite number of fractions that are equal to one itself, um, equal to themselves. So, for example, one half is the same as the fraction three over six, which is the same as a fraction four over eight or five over ten, etc. Right? So, proportions just uh, you're not are not just two equal fractions. They could be two or more equal fractions. So, if you have all these equal fractions then this is true, okay? So all, we can add up all the numerators of these equal fractions and divide it by all the respective denominators, and that in and of itself will create a equal fraction. So let's let's go ahead and see how that works. So we have one half is equal to three six is equal to four eighths. So let's add up all the uh, numerators. So one plus three plus four, okay, that's eight. And then two, six, and eight. All right, just like this, we're just following this other property of proportions, and that's going to be 16, and 8 over 16 is, in fact, 1 half, okay? 1 half, 3 to, uh, over 6, if I do, uh, reduce that, that's 1 half. 4 over 8, reduce that, that's uh, 1 half. Add up all the numerators, divide it by all the, the sum of all the denominators, I get 1 half. So, again, properties of proportions. We have more than just what you probably taught or probably thought of, with the means and extremes, or the cross product. See that? Proportions are cool. Math is so cool. There's just so much to learn. And, you know, if you don't look at math uh, as fun, hopefully this video has changed your mind. Okay? So proportions are awesome. They are, you know, used everywhere, okay, in mathematics. Not just in algebra. Uh, they're used a lot in geometry. Matter of fact, uh, this, what we just went over, I teach this in my geometry course. I teach basic proportions in my algebra course, but this is typically um, taught in geometry because we use proportions to solve 
uh, similarity problems. And that's a whole nother topic uh, that you can learn about in geometry. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, or liked it in some way, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, like my teaching style, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time and have made many, many, many hundreds of math videos all there for you, organized in various playlists on my channel, basic stuff to advanced stuff. But if you really want my best uh, uh, math help, check out the links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.